Well, Jim, if you cast your mind back to last Monday, there was obviously a lot of disappointment and frustration following the Torquay defeat. Since then, two games, two wins, five goals scored. It must be a much happier camp today. Yeah, um, I think um, it's been a happy camp all pre-season. Um, we've seen a lot of things come together, going very well. I think uh, the defeat was a real challenge for our mentality and how we reacted to that. And uh, it was disappointment, not just with the result, but also the reaction. But um, we dusted ourselves down Monday and we got back to doing what we do, be professional, work hard, uh, do a lot of things right and uh, trust that that process gets you the results. And um, it was great to get the win Tuesday. Um, and I felt that that would just give us that lift and momentum going into Saturday. Um, but again, another really hard fought, uh, well-deserved uh, victory for the lads. And um, you know, we sat here, uh, probably a different mood, um, not just um, feeling better about ourselves, but also maybe a little bit more, um, less emotional, but a little bit more tired. Um, so just looking forward to tomorrow's game now, because the lads can't wait to get back out on the pitch. Obviously, Tuesday and Saturday were two very different kind of wins, really. I mean, what, what pleased you most about the reaction from the Torquay game to now? Um, well, obviously, we, for one or two, we had a few problems, a few hangovers from Torquay that we had to address on Monday, and um, they weren't, we weren't able to address them in time for Tuesday, so the team was slightly changed, which is a huge challenge for those players to overcome the absence of one or two players. And I think that was the most pleasing thing, is that they reacted well. There was a great positivity about the group um, to go behind, especially in the difficult circumstances of the nature of the goal. Uh, the lads showed not only great character, but a real uh, turning the emotion around and using it a positive way, which was fantastic. And I think that um, stood them in good stead going into the end of the week, where, again, slightly different environment, you know, nil-nil, a little bit of frustration, a little bit of angst about how we're going to get the goal and um, I think the lads summed up at half time just keep working hard keep asking the same questions and um, ultimately uh, the cracks appeared and uh, we were able to exploit them and uh, it was a great win in the end um, and we're kind of feeling lots of positive emotion at the end of this week but um, again we're also last week's gone now those points are in the bag we're sat at the table we want to be finished higher and we've got a massive week ahead with two really tough away games. As you said there, it's our fourth game in 10 days tomorrow and then another away game on Saturday. Can we start to expect a bit more rotation amongst the team to deal with the gruelling schedule? I think we've already seen that. Um, a few people have picked up on the um, comments about fatigue in the group. I, I don't care what level you play at, whether you're international, Premier League or, or even an amateur. Um, to, to ask people to play at their best, uh, especially for really well-trained athletes that can play at a high level, to ask them to play at their best, um, continually, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, it's a tough ask. Um, we've seen with other teams that um, they're having injuries. Um, you know, I mentioned Dover's um, both games, three games, they've had to withdraw players with injuries. Um, we've made sure that our pre-season got everybody durable, but part of that strategy has been the management of players during the game. Um, we didn't need to make a huge change on Saturday. Um, maybe one enforced change with the absence of McCauley and the, and the welcoming back of Liam. Um, but there was a bigger gap between Tuesday and Saturday. But I think going into next Tuesday now, we've got a couple of injuries, a couple of bangs, a couple of players who are feeling the stress. Uh, so we have to be careful because the resting and the rotation might just help get the best out of those fresher players or give those players that have been overworked an opportunity to take a, a, a step back and re-energise themselves for, for the other games. But yeah, nobody wants to come out, but um, we do have to be very balanced in our judgments. Um, but we'll, have a, we'll definitely have a few changes come Tuesday night. And uh, I'm very fortunate that whether those changes be from the start of games or whether those get, be the changes during the game, they're working for us at the moment. I was just about to say, it probably helps when you, you keep making substitutions that are coming on and making such game-changing differences like Adam Thomas on Tuesday. Now let's read on Saturday, is he in contention to start now on? on Tuesday? Um, very much so, but you know, Adam would have probably been disappointed to come on against Halifax, score the winner and then be sat on the bench again. So I think it's all in the context of the game, but, but even before the Torquay game we've seen Arbel come off the bench and score the winning goals in the last two tough pre-season games. Um, and that isn't always about their quality, but sometimes that's just the nature of the game where the fatigue element's kicking in, the opposition are more tired, the, the game's opened up a little bit. Um, they're less intense in the way they defend and it's a great opportunity for those players um, 
So it's not per se that they're better players on the bench than the ones that are playing, but the lads who are doing 45, 60 minutes of working the opposition and, if you like, softening them up or making the game a little bit more open, um, the others are benefiting at the moment. Um, but yeah, the, uh, um, obviously Adam and uh, Alex are in contention. We set out a team today that includes a couple of changes and I think it's well balanced. Uh, it gives us a little bit of the solidity to core, but also gives us um, the little bit of extra energy in life that I think we'll need to, to just make sure that we keep wheels and peg back in our own half and um, give ourselves an opportunity to win the game. One of the benefits of bringing Alex on on Saturday was it seems to open up a lot more space for, for John Rooney in that number 10 role, obviously got himself a couple of goals. You moved him there at half-time at Torquay and he stayed there ever since. How do you think he's adapting to that role further forward? It's a difficult one for John because I think John wants to be involved in a, a sort of a more universal free. I think he wants to be in a team, uh, you know, Barrow, he was kind of, um, you know, he wasn't a 10. And I think he doesn't want to be a 10. He wants to be an 8 that can pop up in a 10 position. Uh, but in our pre-season games, we found that um, as we changed shape and he was used more as a 10, especially when the game opens up, that was when he was getting his opportunities. Could have scored late on against York, scored late on against Geisley. Um, you know, and he's, he's there creating and helping with the final goals. Um, and I think we've seen that on Saturday. But we, we've got to take it into its context that it's a crowded... Um, you know, I've said this, the teams have been coming and playing, say, 3-4-1-2. Uh, they've, Halifax in particular, three big centre-halves, two big holding midfielders. They keep a really tight block. It's very difficult for Richie, Connor and John to get any room. Uh, we have to then make the pitch a little bit bigger, pull them apart. Sometimes it's um, stretching them, making the back three drop off. Sometimes it's pulling the midfielders up. Sometimes it's playing with width, so you, you pull them apart. Uh, I think uh, Alex Reid's introduction stretched the game more for us. I think them changing, taking off a holding midfield and playing attacking midfield meant there was a, another little gap there. And I think the longer the game went on, the more you could sense there was gaps and opportunities to exploit, um, especially when a team opens up to chase the game. Uh, so there's a combination of things, but I think John's a very skilled midfielder, a very universal midfielder. He could play him anywhere and have an impact. Um, what we have to understand is the context of the game and how best to use him uh, when, the, you know, either to build a play or to be the connector of play or the finisher of play. So um, at the moment he's doing it, you know, he'd be a lot happier for the, the part that he played on Saturday because um, a lot of the game's been frustrating, but when the gaps open up and he gets the opportunity to get himself a goal, then I'm not only pleased for him, but I'm sure that'll make him feel a lot better after his week's work. Just want to talk to you about Sam Minahan as well. 150 games in a Stockport County shirt on Saturday. Well, he's been a great servant to the club down the years, hasn't he? Yeah, um, Sam, like, like many of the guys have brought in, um, I mean, we made, made some sensible additions to the team, and these were players that, um, uh, a little bit like Ash Palmer, Jordan Keane, Adam Thomas, Sam Minahan, they're all player of the year at their respective clubs. They were young enough, they were very strong part-time players, but with the potential to go full-time, and those decisions were made three or four years ago. We've gone full-time this year, but back two, three years ago, there was a lot of talk of us going full-time and we felt these players could take us on that journey. And it's great for Sam now to be here for 150 games and, and looking like he's been a full-time or all his career. So I'm really pleased for him and the impact he's had. Um, and like I said, he's, um, because he's been, a little bit like myself, because he's been involved in the community work, um, joining the foundations team, um, people are getting to know him as a, not just a, p a professional, but as a player. Um, and I think he's a, not just a, a popular figure on the pitch, but he's also a well-respected person off it. That must delight you as a manager. I mean, obviously all the new players that have come in over the summer, but when you look at the team, Ben, Ash and Sam have played every minute. Adam Thomas came on the other day and scored the winner. It's still the, the old guard, if you like, that's still making a decisive contribution to the team. Well, if you go back to last year, the old guard got us to close on a playoff position, which was an incredible achievement when you consider the investment that was made last year. Um, and a lot of it's been made of Liam Hogan coming in, Lois Maynard and Richard Bennett. And, and, and slowly but surely, the, um, you will see the, um, the improvements that they bring. Um, you know, and John Rooney and Connor James, James, uh, James Mark, uh, Alex Reid. You know, the group's getting stronger. But I think they were, you know, like, going back to a couple of years ago when we talked about bringing in good players, good professionals and good people. They are uh, Ben, Ash, uh, Sam. Keane or Adam, um, they, they, you know, they've been great servants and they've got every right to be part of this team. I mean, 
Keno's come in for the last couple of games and done a great job, been all action. Um, we really want it to be a success for him. Um, so it, it's, got, it's gone really well for those guys. Um, fortunately, all the work that we did in pre-season has helped them transition from part-time to hybrid to full-time. And uh, they're looking really strong for that. Looking ahead to tomorrow, Wheelston, they went to Yeovil and got a good point there. Their first home game since promotion, is that the worst time to play them in a way? Um, I don't know. There's always, there's never an easy... I, I think sometimes when teams come up, there's always a little bit of energy and the momentum. I think, um, you know, uh, when, naturally when you come up, you're, you're excited um, about playing your first game at home at that level. You're always excited about playing the next level of team, whether that be Notts County, Stockport County, Yeovil, Wrexham's, Chesterfields, um, all the big names of the level. Um, I mean, obviously, they would have been, back in the day, they would have been delighted to play in front of their fans. Um, but yeah, it was a, it's a bit of a strange one because the first game they didn't play, um, which would have been a real disappointment for them when we're all desperately looking forward to starting the season, they didn't quite kick off. And the first one, like us, was a difficult away game at Yeovil uh, to contend with on a Tuesday night. But yeah, um, from what I've seen, them, they look like, um, like all the teams that got promoted last year. Very, very competitive side, bring a lot of qualities to the league. Uh, Quite refreshing sometimes, a little bit like Holton and um, uh, Wilston are a good football inside, show that there's another way of playing a game rather than getting caught up in this physical league and this um, war of attrition and set plays. I mean, they, you know, they, they, they try to play the game in the right way. And there's going to be challenges for them along the way between playing that way and recognising when you can play that way and when you have to play a slightly different way. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be an exciting game. I think they're a good football inside. They look very, very well coached. Um, lots of players that seem to enjoy playing the game. And uh, it'll be a tough game for us. Um, no matter whether a team's coming down from the, the EFL or coming up, um, they're all really tough games. Go to anybody's patch, they always give you a really good game. So we've got to be at our best to get a result there. You spoke about teams and how they set up against us this season. A lot of them have sat deep, put potatoes on the counter. So are you not expecting that from Wilson tomorrow? Oh, well, I think Wheelston, um, from what I've seen, are kind of, um, they remind me very much of the team that I would have had put 10 or 12 years ago. And, you know, you, a well coached 4 2 3 1, uh, good rotations between the front players, wingers coming in, full backs going, and, and the holding midfielders, if you like, giving the full backs the license to go on overlap and intralap. Um, so they're quite an exciting team to watch. You can see that, the, you know, that's not a by the players' design, that's by the manager's design, the coach's design. Um, yeah, I don't think it's their, their ethos to sit off. Uh, like every team, there's moments when you're under pressure, you've got to defend, solid, but uh, from all of the games of uh, action I've seen so far, they're a 4 2 3 1. When they're chasing a the game, they play a 4 2 3 1, but play it more aggressively. When they're winning games or happy enough with where they are, they, they play a more solid 4 2 3 1 game. Um, but yeah, no, they're not a team that looks like they're, 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 they're going to come, set out to get a clean sheet, uh, pinch a goal. Uh, they look like a team that um, uh, are going to start every game and play to win. So um, that should make it a fairly entertaining open game. And um, like I said, um, I hope they do well, but um, I'll only wish them luck after Tuesday. And just finally, Jim, you've, you've spoke a lot about adding little bits to our game as we go on each game, game by game. What are you hoping to see the team add this week at, at Wellston and at uh, Chesterfield on Saturday? Great question. Um, you know, it's very, it can be a little bit frustrating as a coach because you're all the time you're trying to consolidate um, aspects of our game and then introduce little things, whether that be a, a tweak of a set play, whether that be um, you know a slightly different way of arranging the front three against different types of opposition, and um, we're constantly talking about it, but. You know, as the, co uh, the, the medical and the, the fitness guys are saying, it's game minus one. You know, it's very difficult on a Monday, get very difficult on a Friday to do too much work. So we're having to learn a little bit from our experiences and draw upon experiences. Um, I think what we added um, on s s Tuesday and Saturday, the Tuesday we, we, we clearly added um, the potential to use the plus one to break out from the back. And we've seen that far more dramatically than the previous game. I think on Saturday we have to realise that um, maybe uh, using the power and the presence of um, uh, Richie Bennett and Alex Reid was, was the way to unlock them and that proved the case. So I think our players are learning 
to be multi-skilled. We're not one way, we, we have to be able to be flexible. And if there was anything that I'd like to encourage them over this week and the next couple of games is, is to take more ownership of recognising what works. You know, whether it's short throwings or long throwings, whether to take short corners, long corners, whether to take goal kicks short or long. And then them to recognise the principles of when and where and to recognise whether that actually hurts the opposition because ultimately you want to play effective football. So uh, I think we're seeing improvements week in, week out as the team comes together, but we're also seeing individuals adding qualities and I just want to see them taking a little bit more responsibility on the pitch, a little bit more ownership for their organisation and their impetus and ruthlessness to make things happen. If they do that, I'll have to do less shouting from the sideline, I think. Well, Jim, good luck for Tuesday. Thanks for your time. Thanks so much.